Hi, one of the big problems that I find that people have when preparing for their dive master course or their paddy instructor development course is to do with the subject compartments, half times and end values. But if you're struggling with this, I've got some good news for you. This stuff is really easy. Being a paddy dive professional isn't about being able to talk about science like a nuclear physicist. It's about much more important things, like looking after divers, whether they're students or certified divers. So you'll find that this video is more about what you don't need to know rather than what you do need to know. So make sure that you realize just how easy this is. I'm going to include some current questions that you're likely to find on your dive master course and on your instructor exam. So by the end of this video, you'll be confident that you can answer every question that you're likely to be given. There'll be nothing more that you need to learn. Of course, if you develop a burning passion to know more, you can read your Dive Master Manual on page 259 onwards, or you can find out much more in your encyclopedia. So sit back, relax, and let this wash over you. You can always play the video again if you want, and I would suggest that you take some notes along the way. So we'll get started with the very basics of diving. Now I learned to dive several years ago, and in those days the open water manual introduced the concept of nitrogen absorption by having a picture of a diver surrounded by nitrogen symbols. This signified nitrogen entering the bloodstream while under pressure. Although, of course, I was much too clever to get nitrogen into my bloodstream, I went out and bought the thickest wetsuit I could possibly find to stop this happening. And then I soon learned that the nitrogen didn't come from the surrounding water. It came from the cylinder on my back. The air that the cylinder contained was approximately 80% nitrogen. So as we as divers descend and the pressure around us increases, as we breathe in air, nitrogen enters our bloodstream via the exchange of gases in our lungs. So the first place that nitrogen enters our body is into our blood. And then as the blood travels around our body to deliver oxygen, it also delivers nitrogen at the same time. So the parts of our body that are rich in blood absorbs nitrogen first and quickly, much faster than the parts of our body, like cartilage or bones, that don't have such a rich blood supply. So bits of our body are taking on nitrogen fast and some slow, and of course, various amounts in between. This is the pure definition of compartments. Compartments or tissue compartments is just another way of saying and describing the fact that parts of our body absorb nitrogen at different rates. Now in your Dive Master Knowledge Review in section nine, there is a question that asks this. It goes something like this. To account for the fact that the human body does not absorb nor release nitrogen at the same speed, decompression models have theoretical something. And the answer, of course, is compartments or tissue compartments. The question and the answer is as simple as that. There are no questions anywhere tougher than that one. And now let's talk about half times. As we said, the compartments absorb or release nitrogen at different speeds. And it's those speeds that we'll look at now. The name given to these speeds is half times. A shorter half time, like five minutes for example, means that the tissue compartment absorbs nitrogen quicker than a longer half time, say 60 minutes. But instead of talking science here, Let's look to see just how simple this behavior of half times really is. To explain it, let's look at what happens when you put a tea bag into a cup of boiling water. At first, the water immediately turns brown as the tea quickly gets absorbed into the water. But as time ticks by, the speed that the tea leaks into the water is slower. 
until eventually the speed that the tea brews grounds to a complete halt. This is classic half-time behaviour. As nitrogen is introduced to a compartment, it's always absorbed faster at the beginning and then after a time it slows down by half and then half again. So now we come to the next question. I wonder if you can answer it. We might find something similar on your Dive Master Knowledge Review. It might look something like this. The speed at which a tissue compartment absorbs or releases gas is called its... Did you get it? It's half time. Simple, huh? These are the hard questions. You'll only find these questions also in your Knowledge Reviews. On the Dive Master course, there's nothing like this on your Dive Master final exam, and as far as I know, you won't see it on your instructor course, and you won't see it on your instructor exam either. We will revisit this subject in another video that I've made, the one about the recreational dive planner and how that was formed. In that video, again, I'll show you how easy it is to understand all of the knowledge needed for your instructor level courses, and I'll show you how typical questions uh, are asked in the PADI exams. And again, you'll see just how simple it is to answer those. If you want to get more help with your Dive Master course or get more tips as a PADI instructor, why don't you just click right now on the YouTube subscribe button. That way you can get access to all of my online YouTube videos at any time. Now let's look at the last section that we were looking at, M values. The M, it simply stands for maximum maximum values. And as we know, when we go diving, when we look at our computers, we sometimes see the no stop time, it starts to fall. Five minutes left, four minutes left, three minutes. It means that one of the tissue compartments in our body is reaching a level of nitrogen that if we stayed at that depth, it would require a decompression stop. Now, we know that the fast tissues take on nitrogen very quickly, but they also lose nitrogen very quickly as well. And because they lose nitrogen very quickly, they can have a much higher M or maximum value of nitrogen than the slower tissues. Deep dives can be very short because the fast tissues reach their maximum tolerance very quickly. But on shallower dives, it's the slow tissues that eventually reach their maximum levels after a period of time. Now, of course, we don't need to know, we don't care which tissue is reaching its M value, we just look at our computer. And here, then, is another question that you might find on your Dive Master Knowledge Reviews. Simply, fast tissues have a higher or lower M value compared to slow tissues. And we now know that the answer, of course, is higher. And that's it. That's the hard part out of the way. All of the questions that we've talked about so far are from your Dive Master Knowledge Reviews. On your Dive Master Final Exam, there's only one question regarding this topic. And to prove how simple that one is, all you need to do is grab hold of your open water manual and read the short section called Decompression Sickness. You'll find it on page 193. You don't need any more information than you learned back on your open water course. The question goes something like this. Dive table models are based on the concept that decompression sickness can be avoided by keeping the pressure gradient between the dissolved nitrogen in the tissues and the surrounding pressure within acceptable limits. And the answer is called, of course, is true. Now, you won't find any questions tougher than these in the whole PADI system. It just goes to prove that this is a niche topic. It's not necessary for every professional to know this stuff inside out. However, if you or your future students want to find out more about any subject, there are many adventures that you can choose from. Now, I hope that you found this video helpful. If you're heading toward your PADI Instructor Development course soon, you, need to, you want to become a PADI Instructor, give me a call at this email address and ask me how my Distance Learning IDC Preparation course will help you get right up to speed with dive theory and PADI standards. All of my IDC candidates take this course 
It means that they can fully appreciate the wonderful teaching techniques that I teach without being stressed by physics. So give me a call and I'll gladly answer any questions that you might have.